Hey everybody, how's it going? Matthew Kadish here, author of the Earthman Jack Space Saga, available on Amazon.com and bloviator of all things internet related, here today with some interesting TV news that's been hitting the interwebs and causing a little bit of controversy. So uh, this story kind of broke a few days ago, but um, I haven't had time to sit down and really analyze it until now. And what I saw on Twitter was a lot of this being passed around as an example of uh, Disney's continued war against men, I guess, for lack of a better word, uh, for uh, on the you know Twitterverse right now, there's this big kind of push uh, of outrage culture, in the sense that everyone's just looking for stuff to be upset about. Sometimes it's stuff they have a right to be upset about. Sometimes it's stuff that they don't necessarily have a right to be upset about because it's misunderstood. And uh, when I saw this initially, uh, I got the impression that this was something that was uh, kind of triggering people in a way that wasn't necessarily, you know, honest, uh, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, but essentially, people saw this headline um, from Cosmic Book News, and they just assumed that this is another example of Disney pushing a feminist agenda at the expense of men, and it uh, understandably upset a lot of people. And if you were to read this Cosmic Book News article, which we're gonna go through here in a bit, uh, you'd probably feel justified in feeling insulted or you know, uh, upset or what have you, because it does come off like a uh, kind of slap in the face to men, uh, you know, for the sake of a political agenda. However, that's not necessarily the case, and I'm going to tell you why in a little bit. But first, let's dive into this, shall we? So the headline for this Cosmic Book News article is Disney turns down Sylvester Stallone series because it's not, quote-unquote, female-focused. Yes. Um, this is an article by Matt McGloin. And, uh, you know, uh, Matt is not shy about uh, kind of expressing his bias in this article, but you know, we'll get into that in a bit. So the article starts off with, as if we needed any more evidence about Disney's biased agenda, it is learned that, uh, in English grammar, <laughs> it is learned their ABC network turned down the opportunity to hear a pitch about an upcoming Dolph Lundgren and Sylvester Stallone action drama series because it was not female focused. Word comes from Deadline of all places, I don't know why that would be surprising, considering Deadline is a entertainment news uh, outlet, but okay. Word comes from Deadline, of all places, about ABC passing on the project because it is not a female show, as Deadline notes. And here's a quote from the Deadline article. Because of ABC's renewed focus on female-focused fare, the network was the only one of the big four not to hear the pitch. As the blurb, as the blurb mentions... This isn't something new, as Disney and ABC are renewing their focus on quote-unquote female-focused fare. The description of the Dolph, Dolph Lundgren and Sylvester Stallone series titled The International offers that Lundgren will star and that Stallone will executive produce and possibly direct, which will be written by drama veteran Ken Sanzel, Reef Breaks and Numbers. We see that Disney doesn't appear to like that. The series, quote, stars Lundgren as a covert operative at the Department of Safety and Security at the UN, he is described as the UN's secret special agent, a one-man SWAT team, and hostage negotiator. So even if the series was the best show ever, we see that Disney didn't even bother to learn anything about it, simply because it stars Dolph Lundgren. More than likely, if the series was starring a female actor and character, they would have heard the pitch. All right, so the whole premise of this article is wrong. Now, I'm going to tell you guys why. But before we get into the analysis here, I'm going to go to the source of this article and show you what was really said. And then uh, once you see this, you might have a different take than uh, our good friend Matt McGloin does. Okay, so here's the deadline article. It says, Dolph Lundgren Sylvester Stallone action drama series heats up TV marketplace. Very different headline here. Um, and we're going to see why. So in this exclusive to Deadline, it says the Expendables and Rocky co-stars Sylvester Stallone and Dolph Lundgren have reunited for The International, an action drama series which is shaping up to be the first 
sought after hour long project this broadcast season. Let me just repeat that sought after hour long project. The show starring Lundgren and executive produced by Stallone hails from Tony Krantz flame ventures. According to sources, the project was sold in the room at all three broadcast networks. It was pitched to this week. And those networks are Fox, CBS, and NBC, and also drew interest from the two streamers it was taken to, Netflix and Apple. Then it says, because of ABC's renewed focus on female-focused fare, the network was the only one of the big four not to hear the pitch. Okay, so here's what this article tells us. It's it's that this... um, new show, The International, by Dolph Lundgren and Sylvester Stallone, was very well received at um, these pitch sessions. And basically, the of the big four broadcast networks, three of the four heard the pitch and really liked what they heard, and then there were two more streaming networks involved for a total of you know five major networks that the show was pitched to. And it seems that people are very interested in Hollywood to have... Uh, uh, something uh, this masculine, quote unquote, with Lundgren and Stallone involved uh, on their networks. Now, the thing here is where it says ABC's renewed focus on female focused fare. Now, one of the things I like to espouse on this channel and just when I'm talking about entertainment industry stuff to begin with is that you always need to know who your audience is when you're telling a story or when you're selling you know, some type of uh, entertainment product, be it a TV or a movie or TV show, movie, uh, whatever. So uh, one of the interesting things about TV, which is kind of different from the movies, is that TV networks know their audiences better than anyone else, okay? They have all their metrics, they have all their demographics sorted out. They know everything there is to know about the people who are watching their uh, broadcasts, right? So, uh, you know, you know how much of your audience is male, you know how much of your audience is female, you know the racial uh, background of your audience, you know their age ranges, you know, and the reason that they know this stuff so well is because they need to be able to sell uh, commercials. And if they have a specific demographic that a specific kind of... um, Uh, company is looking to advertise to, they can charge, you know, uh, higher amounts to those companies because they know that that their demographic matches up with the demographic they're trying to reach. And um, when it comes to streamers, they don't, you know, they don't sell based off of uh, commercials. Uh, So like Netflix, for instance, they don't show commercials. Um, they're based off of sub- subscriptions. So they're, the way they analyze their audience is slightly different than the way that the big networks do. And the thing is, is that um, even though the Fox network is not owned by Disney, it's its own uh, separate entity, all the Fox uh, production end of things, the ones that uh, where Fox makes the shows, that's owned by Disney. So Disney actually kind of heard this pitch uh, in the form of Fox. So, you know... Uh, uh, networks that have more male focused audiences, like for instance FX, the FX network, uh, would probably uh, hear out this pitch and stuff like that. So Disney was not completely absent from these negotiations. Uh, they were there in, in the form of Fox. Um, but uh, the thing about ABC is that ABC's audience, if you look at their top shows, has always been primarily women, at least for you know uh, a number of years now. What's ABC's number one show? Grey's Anatomy, right? Look at look at the other shows that populate ABC's network. They have a lot of family-friendly sitcoms or family-oriented sitcoms. Uh, I, I believe their, their top ones are like Modern Family and Blackish. Those appeal to women. Um, they're the home of uh, Good Morning America, which is, you know, their, their audience is strictly housewives, you know. They have The View, uh, which is, you know, uh, heavily female-focused. Uh, But they also have stuff like The Bachelor, The Bachelorette. Um, What I'm saying here is that if you look at ABC's current slate, their biggest shows are all geared towards women. Um, All the Chandra Rhyme shows, like Grey's Anatomy, uh, you know, How to Get Away with Murder, stuff like that, those are all very female-focused. And the reason they're female-focused is because that's the audience that ABC caters to. It's the female demographic. 
And this is not something that is uh, unnatural uh, for, you know, particularly those in TV to look at because they know that, you know, women have uh, very strong purchasing power. Uh, you know, they're very loyal in terms of their viewership and stuff like that. And ABC has kind of cornered that market, whereas other networks like CBS, Fox, and NBC, they, they kind of skew more male. So the, uh, the female-centric, you know, uh, programming uh, strategy is not that um, out of the box. If we look at uh, a network like Stars, for instance, the premium uh, um, cable network, Stars has recently um, done a shift towards what's called a, a premium female strategy. And that's basically Stars noticed that their shows that catered to a female audience tended to retain subscribers better than the shows that, you know, um, catered to a male audience. And they found that the women who watched these shows would pull in, like, you know, men in terms of, like, you know, their husbands or boyfriends or whatever to watch it. And one of those primes examples were, was the show Outlander, where the, the Outlander is basically, it's a time travel historical romance. And it's geared specifically towards, you know, the female demographic. And with that show in particular, they found that men started watching it because their wives would drag them in, into the show. And uh, stars basically canceled a lot of um, shows that kind of were geared towards the male demographic to create shows that were focused primarily on the female demographic. And I'm going to do another video on the, the whole star strategy because it's actually really interesting in terms of like how they're, uh, you know, breaking down um, the people who watch their network and what this particular demographic of premium females uh, respond to. And I, I feel like it deserves its own video. Otherwise, I'd include it in this one. But that's just an example of how um, network executives look at this stuff. Now, because ABC's primary demographic is women, they have no interest in, you know, listening to shows that primarily target men. They want more shows that, you know, kind of look at, you know, cater to their demographic of, of women, you know, of whatever age range. And all their shows, like, you know, even um, th this other show, uh, the, the Rookie with Nathan Fillion and stuff like that, is kind of catering towards the, the female demographic. And one of the interesting things that uh, the Stars chief uh, talked about in an interview with, with The Hollywood Reporter is that you don't need to have women in main roles to may have a show be female-centric. You can have men be um, in, in the main role, and it's it can still be female-centric because those men appeal to the women. You know, uh, they're you know they use the sex appeal of the the main stars to to draw in women. So just having a woman as your main character doesn't necessarily make a, a film or a TV show female-centric. Um, it you know you can have a man in the main role and have it be female-centric. Like for instance, uh, you know a movie like um, Fifty Shades of Grey where the uh, the main character is, you know, um, uh, what's his name, Christian Grey. And that's the thing that appeals to women is like having this sexy man in the lead role. And so um, just the fact that Dolph Lundgren was starring in, in the show wasn't something that was like, you know, oh, we can't have it because it's not female centric because women do respond to, you know, uh, having uh, attractive men in the male leads. Now, whether or not you think Dolph Lundgren is attractive or not is, you know, I guess up to individual tastes. But, you know, uh, the pitch for the international, I mean, you can't get more manly <laughs> than this pitch. Uh, starring Dolph Lundgren, executive produced and written and directed by Sylvester Stallone. I mean, you might as well, uh, you know, pitch a show about a guy riding a tiger smelling like Axe body spray as he takes on the entire Russian army with, uh, you know, with an AK-47 drinking whiskey. I mean, like, that's literally, like, how masculine th this show sounds. So, uh, you know, knowing that this show is not going to match up with their demographic, of course, ABC kind of skipped out on the pitch meetings because they, they just knew, like, you know, this isn't for us. But the fact that Fox was there, it shows that Disney, you know, um, isn't kind of just passing this by because it's geared towards men. It just means that the demographic for ABC's network didn't line up with what the show was offering. But there was a lot of interest in it from all the other um, networks, um, like the, the, the other big three, basically. 
And so if we go back to this cosmic book news story, we, re we quickly realize that um, the author kind of cherry picked these um, bits from the, the deadline article without actually understanding the reason behind why this was done. And uh, I get the feeling that this was kind of like a um, like almost a clickbait type thing just to get viewers to come check out the, the website because he even goes on to make the, uh, the argument down here where he compares the ABC decision not to hear the international pitch with Disney's agenda with Marvel, Pixar, and Star Wars. Now, the difference here is that um, Marvel, Pixar, and Star Wars are all on the movie end of, of Disney, and they all kind of operate as their own independent entities. So Marvel, um, you know, is its own little company within Disney that operates uh, kind of autonomously. Same with Lucasfilm, same with Pixar. And uh, they don't necessarily know their dem demographic. Now, that being said, they have an idea of who their audience is. And the changes that Marvel, Pixar, and Star Wars have made uh, to their slate of, you know, forthcoming films is based on expanding their audience. Like, they know they have the male demographic kind of wrapped up because that's the core audience of, you know, of Marvel and Star Wars. And what they've been trying to do, um, whether or not you think they've been doing it successfully or not, is expand that audience to include more women, more minorities, and stuff like that. And to a certain extent, it's been working. So like, for instance, Marvel has brought in more African-American viewers with like Black Panther and stuff like that. They're looking to bring in more Asian um, viewers with like Shang-Chi and, uh, you know, more uh, female view viewers with, you know, stuff like the Black Widow movie and, and more uh, Captain Marvel, more female focused, uh, more female centric um, characters. And Star Wars has attempted to do that as well. Um, now, I don't think they're doing a very good job of it. I mean, Marvel's kind of doing a better job than Star Wars has, but um, to, to equate what Disney's doing on the movie end of things with what they're doing on the TV end of things isn't quite accurate because the TV end of things has a very specific um, strategy based off of the data of their audiences. And like I said before, a lot of the TV decisions are based off of who can we sell advertising to. And ABC is heavily into, you know, uh, the, the advertisers who want to target women specifically. Because, uh, uh, you, you know, there's that old adage that, you know, it's the male demographic age 25 to 40 that uh, is the most coveted. And it's also the most um, competitive in terms of like, you know, um, viewership. So uh, ABC is kind of taking a counter strategy and saying like, well, instead of targeting the male demographic, we're going to target, target the female demographic. And we're going to court advertisers that want to reach that demographic. And that's how they're, you know, making their money by kind of having a different strategy than the other big three networks. So uh, this article here at Cosmic Book News trying to conflate that with uh, what Marvel, Pixar, and Star Wars are doing doesn't line up to me. Um, you you got to understand that a lot of these decisions in Hollywood are based off of, you know, kind of um, data that feeds their um, business end of things, as opposed to political uh, considerations. Now, that's not saying that political considerations never play a role in these decisions in terms of like, oh, we, we want to you know, promote diversity or we want to promote more uh, female-centric fare or what have you. Those can certainly be political positions, but you can't always take a uh, like logical, strategic a business decision as a political decision, as I think this author made the mistake uh, of doing in this article. Um, because uh, I think a lot of people are kind of worried or upset about the direction of Marvel and Star Wars and what they're doing. And so they're looking for ways to kind of justify their premise that Disney is, you know, waging some type of war against men or it has been corrupted by social justice, you know, um, elements and things like that. When in reality, uh, a lot of these decisions at at least the higher level, at the you know kind of studio executive level, are probably being um, um, driven by actual data and um, and demographics. Uh, so, 
you have to kind of be careful about this stuff. Now, you can always say, hey, you know, I don't like watching ABC because I don't want to support Disney. But you can also say, hey, you know, um, ABC doesn't have any shows that cater to me, so I'm not going to support it um, because, you know, their shows are based around, you know, the female audience and I'm a guy. And so I'm going to go watch Fox or, or uh, you know, CBS or NBC or something along that uh, nature. So um, just be careful about the outrage stuff, guys, because I really think that a lot of people don't understand the ins and outs of, you know, the Hollywood system and why these decisions are, are made. And when you have people who are kind of uh, spreading outrage clickbait, like I feel this Cosmic Book News article is, um, it gets people riled up, but it also kind of delegitimizes your arguments um, in um, the eyes of people who actually work in the business. So the next time Disney um, decides to, you know, make a decision based off of politics, they're like, well, people don't understand this stuff anyway. You know, they, you know, they always attack us for being political, even when we're not. Um, so we're just not going to listen to them anymore. We're just going to go off and do our own thing. Whereas I, I feel like if people are educated and they understand how the industry works, and then they like criticize the stuff that actually matters and is being driven by a political agenda as opposed to a business one, then um, people at the studios are more likely to listen because then, then they're like, oh, well, these people obviously know what they're talking about. So we should kind of take their criticisms into account when going forward. Now, that's not to say that it's actually going to happen because Hollywood is kind of like a bubble and they, they do like to insulate themselves from criticism and outrage. But I, I feel like Every time a, a clickbait, clickbait article hits the web and people get all riled up about it, it's, it's never a good look. It doesn't help our uh, case, especially when it comes to stuff like, you know, Marvel and, and Star Wars that we're very passionate about. So just keep that in mind going forward. Uh, the fact that ABC wasn't interested in this pitch doesn't mean it's not going to get made. It's going to find a home at some other network or streamer, guaranteed. I mean, how can it not with, with the people who are involved with it? And I'm personally going to look forward to seeing the international. I think it's going to be awesome. I love Dolph Lundgren and I love Stallone. Anyway, what do you guys love? What do you think about this news? Do you agree with my analysis of it or not? Let me know in the comments and subscribe to my channel for more movie, TV, and entertainment news. This is Matthew Kadish, and I will catch you guys in the next video. See you later.